My name is Gavin. I'm from Box, and I work in tech ops. And I'm on the database team there, which means I spend a lot of time thinking about uh, performance and optimization, how to monitor. I've got two tools here to show you to do that that we use with MySQL. And they kind of grew up organically. And they became so useful for us that we decided to open source them. Hopefully, they can be useful to other people as well. I've got a lot to show you, so I'm going to try and get started here. Uh, the first is called Animometer, and it's our tool for capturing query performance information. The um, best way to demonstrate this, I think, is with a scenario that probably is very familiar. I saw a lot of hands go up uh, for operations people. So you've probably been in this situation where you're monitoring your system, and everything is going great, and then a code release happens and everything kind of goes a little crazy, and it's your job to find it and fix it as fast as possible. So you might be looking. Let me go ahead and start generating some load against my database. And you might be looking at some stats like this. You probably have graphs of these. And this would be your first clue that this might be a database problem, as a lot of them often are. So if you're looking at this, how would you dig in deeper? You need to know exactly which queries running through this system are causing a problem. In MySQL, one of the best places to get this information is the slow query log. It writes it after the query is run, so it gets detailed information. And because you're probably looking for something that may actually be executing pretty quickly, you need to turn down the threshold and see everything. So let's look at what, might th what that might look like. So if we're looking at this log, you get a fire hose of information. You can't really deal with this. You need tools to process it. One of these is a tool called Query Digest from Percona. And it's good at processing that log and turning it into a more useful report. But even this has a few downsides. You're uh, looking at a small slice of time here. Uh, there's only one server in isolation. And very few people run just one database anymore. You've got masters and slaves. You've got sharding. You've got a lot of machines, tens, hundreds, even thousands is common. But one thing this tool does allow you to do is dump this result into a database. So it provides a great foundation. And that's where Animometer comes in. So we can choose our data source here and then report on that information and visualize it. And all of a sudden, you have a completely different picture of what's going on. We're graphing the count of queries over time here. And you can see it's anything but consistent. So if we were to be looking at that previous report, you would see a very different picture if you were to be looking at the end of this graph versus a snapshot from the middle versus a snapshot from the beginning. And also, this allows you to grab this information from multiple hosts. So we're looking at the aggregate across multiple servers. And we can even break that down and show what the different volume is across different machines. Below this, we have aggregated query statistics grouped by individual query. So you can see what was going on at that time. And it corresponds to the view of time you have in the graph, which means you can do something really straightforward, like select a section of it, zoom in, and the statistics at the bottom will update to reflect that time period that you're looking at. So it allows you to find anomalies visually on the graph and quickly zoom in and find out exactly what was executing during that time. So when you find a query that you might like to inspect, you can click on it. And you get an overview graph at the top, as well as a lot of other information. Now, in the context of troubleshooting our database issue previously, we can see in this overview that this definitely looks like it might be the cause, especially if, we're, if we say we're in this period here, just after the volume has increased. So you can see exactly when our code push went out. And it got to be about 5x of what it was before. And then over here, 
it gets to be even higher. And you can hover over the points on the graph to get the exact values, which is nice. So now you're looking at these peaks and you realize you need to fix this query. You've identified it, so your engineers go to work and they push a fix. And then we're over here. And we see that the volume has been reduced, but it's still higher than it was before. So they go back to work, push out another fix, and you can see the result over here. It's less than it was before. And having this kind of story is huge. It allows your engineers to immediately see what kind of impact they're having on the databases. It's something that you can share and everyone can understand. There's additional information here. You can see the unique kind of query fingerprint that it generates. You can see samples from various systems. So you can see examples of, of this query so that you can test. Um, you can configure it to automatically go out and grab uh, the, the schema so you can see the table statements, indexes. If this was a select query, it would also show the explain plan and the table status. There's also a place you can put in comments so you can keep notes about these things. And then down below, you have a, an extended history which aggregates by day. So you can ha see how things change over time. There's also links here to get these reports as JSON blobs, which allows you to build automation and tools around it. And there's a, another interface here for building custom reports and we use this internally on, uh, on our staging environment, for example, because we're monitoring not just our live environment. We use this to monitor our staging environment. We do that a little bit differently. We capture everything instead of just sampled periods. And we're looking for dangerous conditions that we might want to catch before they go into production. And this allows us to generate a report, then easily look through it and find what to fix. You can change which queries you see here. For example, you might be looking for queries that are doing full table scans, which is something you definitely do not want to let go into production. And so you can change the sort order and filtering and find those queries. So that's Anemometer. The next tool I have is called RainGage. And this is our tool for finding unexpected problems so that you always have the information you need to troubleshoot them. I think, again, the best way to demonstrate this is go back to our terminal and show how this might play out. So if we're looking our, at our server statistics, kind of the high-level view here again, I bet a lot of you probably noticed that they're not consistent. We have these intervals here, this periodic behavior where threads running increase. This is the number of simultaneous queries running on a server. And it increases over a period of a few seconds. And meanwhile, our queries per second drops. This is a server stall. This is a query pileup. And these are things you don't want to see on your server. They're easy to miss, too, because unless you're sitting here staring at this output, they happen over such a short time that your regular graphing and statistics might not catch it. So how do you deal with it? That's where another tool called Stock comes in from Percona, which watches for conditions like this, and then kicks off detailed metric collection. So we can start that as a service. We can wrap it up and start it as a service and keep it running all the time. Now the next time this happens, it kicks off your stats collection, and then the rain gauge part takes over and packages it up and sends it to a central collection point so you can monitor all your servers and aggregate this information and, again, visualize it. So then you might see a picture like this. This is a sample of data collected from several servers. The y-axis here represents the size of the data collected, which roughly correlates to the severity of the event you're looking at. So it's an easy way to get an overview of what's going on. 
And since there's a lot of servers and it get kind of, can get kind of noisy looking at this, you can hover over the individual entries and see them in isolation. So you can see how they contribute. So if we go back to troubleshooting our problem, we might see something like this. This is data captured as I was speaking from our server up here. And you can see this information. You can click on it to drill down. Now you get an overview graph that kind of shows the timeline of history. You get lines here which represent individual samples which more, with more detailed information from these events on the server that you can dig into. Again, we can use nice interface tricks to allow you to, to click and highlight a section of the graph to filter your view. So it makes it really easy to find things that you want to look at and not have to scroll through pages and pages of, of a table here to get the one you want. So now when you click on this, it takes this archive, opens it up, and you've got a lot of links up here which represent different files full of information that you can dig into to get more info about what was going on at the server. We've got network information, disk information, I.O., and various uh, MySQL stats. The default view here is a summary from a tool called SIFT, which is good at kind of giving you an overall picture of what was going on at the time. Now, if I'm looking at that, this one stands out to me. It's saying, it's a summary of transaction statuses. It's saying I have 12 active, and 11 of those are in the lock wait state, which means 11 of my 12 running transactions are sitting around doing nothing, waiting for resources held by another transaction. So that gives me a big hint about what I want to look into. From there, you might look at the InnoDB status in MySQL to get more t detail on those, query on those queries in those transactions. And often at the bottom is where you want to look for the longest running transactions. And you can see we have one here that's been captured running one second, and it's holding a lot of locks. That's suspicious. And just above it, we see another transaction, which is very specifically waiting on a lock held by that transaction. So now we have a pretty good, good idea of what's going on now. We see that a long-running transaction is holding a lot more locks than it should, and everything else is piling up behind it. These are the kind of little things that really hurt your server performance, and they're really good to catch because they often spiral out of control while you weren't watching and become larger problems. So that's RainGage, and those are the two tools we developed. We made them open source, they're on GitHub, and I really would like it if everybody could go out and use them and give me feedback, and that's all I have for you. Thank you.